Greetings! Thank you for being with me. Yes, I'm just going to get a little bit in the view here. I'm Rob Carrington. Who cares, Rob Carrington? <laughs> I wanted to show the uh, the sun. Uh, the sun finally came out pretty good, and uh, I wanted to see the sun. Uh, wanted us to see the sun shining on the sp the snow, sparkling, a beautiful snow, a beautiful blue sky, and it's a beautiful day. And you know, you can make it through this day. There is a way. There is a right way for you to go through whatever you're going through in life. You can make it through this day. There is a way. And the ultimate way is the one who provides the way ultimately, and that's Jesus, the Son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the one who made this day. God has made this day, and Jesus is God the Son. And, uh, you know, reading scripture, I encourage you to read God's word because God is encouraging. And he has the way for us to go through each day and to realize that we go through each day with him, Jesus, when he is our Lord and Savior. He will never leave us and forsake us. So I was reading uh, faithfully in, in the Psalms I work to do every day in the Proverbs also. And this was the Psalm I read today. It was Psalms 118. And this part here stands out. Uh, Psalms 118, verse 22. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And actually, this is a prophecy of Jesus, who is called the cornerstone in the New Testament. This is the Old Testament. And this is a, a prophecy of, of Jesus coming uh, to this world and being the key person, the only person that we can come to for the forgiveness of our sins and to receive eter forgiveness of our sins and in life eternal with him through our faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The one who died on the cross in our place for our sins and rose from the dead to give us life with him forever. So this is part of a prophecy uh, in this psalm here of the future that is, is shown to be fulfilled in the, in the New Testament, the book of Matthew, you can see the fulfillment of this scripture in Matthew chapter 21 and also in Mark 12. And then after this uh, verse here, uh, it says, uh, I'm going to start with verse 22 again. The stone, and that's it's talking about Jesus. He's the rock of ages. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Uh, many people rejected Jesus and they miss the most important person on this, in this world. They came to this world out of heaven, that's Jesus. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. And this next verse, 24, okay? I'm going to change one word here, see if you notice the word I, I change, okay? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be miserable in it. Did you notice what word I changed? <laughs> All right, now I'll read it correctly. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Not miserable in this day, but be glad in this day. And to point out, this is the day, 24-7, God made for us. The Lord, have you made him your Lord? For when he is your Lord, you know that he has made this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice. Look at the beautiful day. Look at the beauty in the day. Take your eyes off whatever may be troubling you this day and think of the beauty in this day. That sun hitting that snow, the blue sky, and to know that the God who created this, Jesus who created this, is with you as your Lord and Savior and has uh, is the one to help us through this day, whatever we go through. For you are loved, you are greatly loved, and Jesus proved that when he hung on the cross for our sins and suffered a death 
that he did not deserve, for he was sinless. He was God on that cross, and he was man. But he took the cross because he loves you and me and desired to save us from perishing and to give us life with him forever, now and forever with him, eternal life with him. And you say, how do you say that Jesus is the one who made everything well? In the New Testament, uh, one of the uh, disciples, John, the disciple John, who saw Jesus killed on the cross and see and saw him ro risen from the dead also, so, uh, wrote this some years after Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven. He wrote uh, John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And this word is Jesus. He's called the word here. And I started to get, in the beginning was the word, was Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. No darkness, no evil can overcome God. And what God planned to do when he came to this earth in the person of Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, God accomplished that with his death and resurrection on the cross. So you go to verse 14 in the same chapter, and we more clearly see that the word is, is Jesus Christ, right? And the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh. God came from eternity, came out of heaven to become flesh in the person of Jesus. And Jesus means the Lord saves. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him. That's John the Baptist. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And that's all about uh, John the Baptist was actually uh, uh, born shortly before Jesus was born as a baby. And yet John the Baptist is, is saying, uh, even though he was born after me, uh, he was before me because he is God that came from eternity to be born as the baby Jesus. Because he was before me, John the Baptist said, for from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Uh, here's Moses, okay? The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. No one has ever seen, seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side, has made him known. That is, Jesus is spoken here as the only God, and he has made the Father known. He has made God the Father known. And as we said before, there is only one God, the Bible teaches us, but that God is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are in one another. They are one. One God. All right, so... This, uh, going back to, I said I was going to talk about uh, I am, and fortunately the scripture mentioned about Moses giving the law, okay? So here's, here's shortly before Moses was given the law by God on Mount Sinai, and uh, I read, I want to read this part from uh, Exodus chapter 3. Uh, and uh, the burning bush had already occurred the bush that did not was not consumed moses saw and god spoke to 
Moses through the burning bush or at the burning bush and whatever way I should say that I'm not sure but God was speaking to, to Moses and telling him uh, God was telling Moses that uh, I want you to to I want to use you to free my people from their slavery in in Egypt and Moses is going ah not me <laughs> I can't do this but God told him, what did he say? I will be with you. He says, I will be with you. And that's our promise that when God is our Lord and Savior, I will be with you to enable you to do whatever I ask you to do, to live this life with meaning and purpose. I will be with you to help you have meaning and purpose in this life. So, all right, I'm going to start with the verse, uh, what should I say? Uh, come now, therefore, this is the King James Version, reading in, in Exodus chapter 3. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should, should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, I will be with thee. And God is with us. And we are his children. Oh, God God is everywhere. But he is in us when we have made Jesus our Lord and Savior. I will be with you. Oh, I will be the one who helps you to do this. Certainly, I will be with, with thee, God says to Moses. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And that did happen. As I mentioned, uh, God uh, on that mountain, uh, after this time God spoke to Moses, God spoke, spoke to Moses again on, on that mountain and gave him the Ten Commandments. Verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is, and, and, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Now, as I, if you've, heard my other message, you know that I'm speaking about I am, am here, where God calls himself, I am that I am, is, is the same, same words that Jesus, uh, when he walked on this earth, you know, uh, approximately, uh, would be approximately 1,500 years after this time recorded that God spoke to Moses, approximately 1,500 years later, when Jesus, after he was born as a baby and became a man, he spoke and he said to those who did not believe in him, as I read before in other messages in John chapter 8, he said, before Abraham I was, he told those people. No, I said that wrong. <laughs> before Abraham, I am. That's what Jesus said. He didn't say I was. That would just put him before Abraham's time, which would be about 2,000 years before that time Jesus spoke to those people telling him that. He says, I was, meaning I, I've, been for, I've been forever. I've, I'm, I'm the same person who talked to Moses that uh, God calls himself I am. So <laughs> since I brutally uh, messed that up, I should go back to John John 9, John 8, rather, uh, and, uh, and read that exactly. 
right. John chapter 8. How's that sun? He's still saying it on the show? Yes. The snow? <laughs> All right. This is what Jesus said to the people who didn't believe in him. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to, said to him, You are not yet 50 years old. And, and have you seen Abraham? <laughs> yeah, he was about 30, 30 to 33 years old then, Jesus was. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. And they were going to stone him because they knew when he says, I am, he was calling himself God. The same God that spoke to Moses, and that's what I'm reading here in Exodus chapter 3. So the meaning of I am here, all right? I'm going to read the notes. It's, uh, can you see? Oh, geez, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah, 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 there it is. Uh, word study. This is by, edited by Zodius. Let's see, word study series, the complete word study Old Testament. Bringing the original text to life. That's, that means I can see uh, what uh, I can see what Hebrew word was used in this text uh, over the English words that I read to you. Because, and uh, like I said, this is edited by uh, Zodius, AMG Publishers. Okay, this is a great study help. You want to really study the Hebrew. Uh, or the Greek and uh, of the original languages, the, the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Aramaic, the original language in which God uh, had the, his Bible written. Uh, this is a great help. So this is a comment, page 153 at the bottom, it says, on 314, where it says this. I'll read 314 again. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, "Thou, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. All right, here's the notes, study notes. The phrase I am, and that's given the number uh, 1961. That's the uh, number that Strong's Concordance gives this Hebrew word. 1961, that was a good year. Oh, I was living then. <laughs> All right. The phrase I am is given the 1961 as the to identify the Hebrew word that was used here for I am. The phrase I am in Hebrew appears to be closely related to God's personal name of Jehovah. All right. And Jehovah is given the the Strong's number of 3068. 3068. So they're totally different Hebrew words here, all right? But they're related. So I'll start this again. The phrase I am in Hebrew appears to be closely related to God's personal name of Jehovah, which is uh, used in Exodus 6.3 uh, in the King James Version. And I'm going to read that, all right? Exodus 6 3. I think I'm going to read it. <laughs> All right. Exodus 6 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Okay. Here is a revealing of the name Jehovah, which is given the same Strong's Concordance number as 3068. Okay, 3068. All right. Which is the same, uh, which is, like I said, the number given to Jehovah. All right. So, phrase I am in Hebrew appears to be closely related to God's personal name of Jehovah, used in Exodus 6.3, or Yahweh, or 
the letters YHWH, okay? Which occurs more than 6,000 times in the Old Testament. However, the abbreviated form of Yahweh is YAH, which is given the Strong's number of 3050, Psalm 68 4, and in the word Hallelujah. Hence, the meaning of Jehovah is not completely clear to biblical scholars, though it seems to, to suggest the timelessness of God, who is the very function of all, excuse me, who is the very foundation of all existence. Perhaps there is a hint of this understanding of the name in Revelation 1.4, where it is said of Christ, that's Jesus, of Christ, him, this is a quote, him which is and which was and which is to come. See Hebrews uh, 13, 8 for that quote. Jesus, is pro Jesus probably alluded to this name of God in John eight fifty eight, which this is a quote of John 858. Before Abraham was, I am. So this is uh, some link into the meaning of uh, uh, God's use of the words I am here. And I'm going to go farther into that with uh, Lord willing in another day. And uh, now let's close in prayer. I thank you God, that you are with us as your children, that you love your children, you will never leave us or forsake us, and that you give us the way, Jesus. You are eternal, and your great love caused you to come out of eternity, uh, to, to let go of your glory in heaven, to take a miserable cross for us on the cross, a miserable place on the cross, to per to die in our place for our sins, to satisfy the wrath of God uh, because of your holiness, God. A sin had to be punished and removed from us that we may live with you forever, being forgiven of our sins and have eternal life with you now and forever. Thank you for your love and blessings. And may we realize that every day is a gift from God and to thank him for it and make him our, our Lord. For as Psalms 118, verse, 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 what, 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 what verse is it, 24? Psalms 118, 24, yes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.